In this video, we are going to cover the Actor Properties window. For starters, let's take a look at the different ways that we can call up the Actor Properties window. The first is by double-clicking on an actor, and we can see the window appear like so. Let me go ahead and close that. We can also call this out of the View menu under Actor Properties. And a third way is to select an actor in the uh, scene and press F4, and this will also bring it up. Now, the window itself has a little bit of a user interface. It has a toolbar, and it has a list of property tabs. These are going to be expandable tabs, which each hold a different set of properties. Some of these tabs are going to be fairly constant, such as advanced and attachment. You'll find those on practically every item. Others will be a little different. Like here, we have a light selected, and you'll notice we have a light tab underneath which we have uh, the light component properties. But if I was to select a static mesh, we naturally don't have that. Instead, we have static mesh actor properties, which opens up into the static mesh component. Component. So you're going to really have to kind of get used to expanding uh, many different tabs and finding the properties that you're looking for. So from there, let's take a quick look at the uh, little tiny user interface in the form of this toolbar that runs across the top of the Actor Properties uh, window. I'm going to start off by selecting our light one more time. Our first button is the lock selected actors with a question mark, so I feel like I should raise my voice like lock selected actors button. If you uh, check this or uh, depress this button, you can select whatever you want, but notice that the properties window is not updating as opposed to if I don't have that activated and then as I select different actors, the properties window is going to update to different types of properties. So here I have a static mesh actor and there are the static mesh properties, but if I select this light, we immediately jump over to the lights properties. It's just a way to lock those down, and that'll actually become important here in just a moment uh, when we start running through a brief demonstration. And to the right of this, we have two buttons that are very special in that as a level designer slash non-programmer, you will probably never ever use them, and so I have brought our resident programmer, Logan, on hand to uh, let us know what these do. Logan, would you tell us what these two buttons are going to do for us? Well, they are, they're used to copy properties. The one on the left is just a simple copy or copy to clipboard. The one on the right is a copy complete. Now, the purpose of these buttons is to allow a programmer to extract the properties from an actor that is in-game. And it will take those properties and store them on the clipboard. This is not useful to a level designer since there is no way to get those properties back into Unreal Engine in a meaningful manner. They're meant to be extracted so that a pro programmer can use the properties in code. So that means for a programmer, they can be very useful. He can go to the clipboard and extract the properties back off. For a level designer, they should probably be ignored because there's no easy way to gain access excuse me, to the data. All right, so moving down from here, uh, thank you very much, Logan. That was very nicely put. No problem. <laughs> we have expand all categories, and you can see that's going to take all of these categories and just boom, ex just blow them all up so that we can scroll down through and see all of the properties available to us. And if that's getting in the way or we need to shrink things up, we have collapse all categories like so. So there we go. Now, before we uh, move away from the Actor Properties window, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other things that you will find in here. Now, currently, again, I have a light selected. I'm going to expand the light category and then expand the light component properties. And now let's go under View, and I'll go under Property Windows, and I'm going to make sure that Toggle Property Item Buttons is active, which we can already see it's active because all these buttons are visible. Just as a side note, if I was to turn this off, those buttons will vanish. But I want to give you a brief overview of what these buttons are and what they do. You will occasionally notice spinners on some uh, properties. These are very much like spinners out of the 3D application 3DS Max, and they allow you to click on the up arrow to increase a value or click on the down arrow to decrease a value. And you can see that number changing, the brightness value changing while I click on those arrows. Down from here, you can see we have an Add New Item button. This is going to be used in any property that is, in fact, an array, meaning that it can contain multiple indexes or uh, basically sub-properties that you have to add in. Now, here I have a list of exclusion volumes, and if I click on the little expansion triangle, you'll notice the triangle turns down, but there's nothing inside of this array. In order to create an exclusion volume, which I'll go ahead and demonstrate for us, I first need to click on the Add New Item button, which brings in instance or index zero, excuse me, and uh, we see that there's currently nothing in it. Now, that also opens up a big, long list of other buttons, some of which we may have seen before, depending on how much experience uh, you have with Unreal Ed. We have use current selection in browser. We can show the generic browser. We can clear any text that we've entered into this field. We can duplicate this item, so basically make another copy of this index so that we'd have uh, index zero and index one. We can delete this item, so we would completely lose it altogether. I can just click it and it disappears, so I have to add it again. And then we have insert new item here, which would be useful if I had a big long list of items and wanted to insert something right in the middle. 
Now, in this particular case, the first two buttons are a little interesting because uh, the tooltip says use current selection in browser, but this particular property isn't looking for an item to be found in the browser. It's actually looking for an actor from the level. It's not to say that there won't be any properties that use the browser. There are lots of things like static meshes and textures our texture properties that would be looking for something available only in the generic browser. Which I will show here in just a second. But in, in this particular case, for this property, we're looking for a level actor. And it just so happens that here in the top viewport, I have a light volume already waiting for us to use. How convenient. But here's the catch. I have the light selected, and I have a new item added to my exclusion volumes list. And what I want to do is select this light volume so that I can then add it to this uh, property. But the problem is, if I try to select the light volume, Watch what the properties window does. It switches over, and suddenly I don't have uh, the ability to add this to the light. Well, that's where that lock button comes in that we mentioned earlier. If I go ahead and depress this and then select the light volume, you'll notice the uh, actor properties window stays constant. And now I click on the button that is actually labeled Use Current Selection in Browser, but it's going to add the object that is selected in the level. So now we, are, uh, we have this exclusion volume added. All I have left to do is to check the B Use Volumes property of the light, and boom. I now have an exclusion volume set up where any object that is within that volume entirely is not going to receive any lighting, which is why you now see the corner of the room fall into darkness wherever it crosses into that volume. So that's a quick look at all of those buttons. Again, I could add more items to this list if I wanted to just by clicking on the Add New Item button. I could add new items uh, into the middle of the list by clicking on the Insert New Item here. And also, because we didn't get to show it earlier, we have Remove All Items from the Array, which will just nuke everything out. And so I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll switch off B Use Volumes, and that'll turn the lights back on in this corner. All right, moving down from here, another button that you're likely to come across and may not uh, immediately recognize is going to be the Create a New Object button. This button's going to do different things, or technically different things, based on the property that you have on hand. But it's always going to show you a list of things that you could add to this particular property. Like here I'm looking for a light function, and I can click on Add, and you'll see Light Function. On some properties, you'll get a big, long uh, drop-down list of various things you could add. In this case, it's only one uh, item that we could potentially add. And next to this, to the left, we have Clear All Text which is just going to wipe out whatever it is I just added. So let's go ahead and click yes and remove a light function. By the way, just uh, food for thought or just as a tidbit, adding a light function simply allows you to apply a material to a light, which can be very handy, but is also a bit expensive in terms of uh, calculations for your graphics card. So let's go ahead and delete that back out. Moving down from here, we have another type of button handy, which looks... Very familiar, but it's kind of not. It's another one of those misnomers. Uh, and you'll notice right here next to light color, I've got the little magnifying glass that says show generic browser, but you're in for a surprise. When you click on this, you actually get a color picker. So the uh, icon can be a little bit misleading. What this is for is just to bring up a color picker so that you can change, in this case, the color of the light. So we've just changed that. And then uh, here to the right, we have use mouse to pick color from viewport. So if you see an interesting color somewhere on the screen uh, in one of your views, you can click on this and then just click on that color, and it'll assign that color here into the light. Let me go ahead and set this back to some faded version of yellow, maybe add a little bit more orange to it. I think that'll work. And there we go. All right, now moving uh, down from... Actually, I think that's all of the different buttons I really wanted to show off. That's uh, going to be the basics of it. Now, I did want to show where uh, the... Add, uh, use, I'm sorry, the Use Current Selection in Browser button and the Show Generic Browser button will actually work for objects in the browser. So I'm going to select a static mesh, and I'll double-click that mesh to open up the Actor Properties window for that mesh. Let's expand Static Mesh Actor and then expand Static Mesh Component. And if we scroll way, way down toward the bottom, we have Materials. And we can expand this, and notice there's currently nothing in here. Uh, we have no materials listed, so I would need to, as before, add a new item, and I get index 0. And so now the Use Current Selection in Browser and Show Generic Browser buttons are important because here we are looking for a material, which is something to be found not in the level, but in the Generic Browser. So we'll click on the Generic Browser, and let's see, I'm sure I've, I've got materials in here somewhere in some package. Let's just uh, dig around. What I'll do is I'll take my resource list. We will check materials. And here we go. Engine materials. Ooh, here we go. Let's take the default material and apply it just 
for the fun of it to this mesh. So we'll close the uh, generic browser, and I'll click on the Use Current Selection in Browser, and if we take a look over here, I now have the default uh, gray checker material applied to this mesh. So it's just a quick look at using that button. And with that, really, that is a look at all of the various uh, aspects of the Actor Properties window. Just keep in mind, again, this window and the things you'll find within it are going to change a lot based on what kind of actor you have selected. So be ready for that, and uh, take a look at actors that you use frequently and study the types of properties that you're, uh, you're going to find and work with most often. And that's going to wrap things up for this video.